what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you a brand new feature to Adobe Photoshop, and that is generative AI. There have been extensions that added similar things in the past using stable diffusion, etc. I'll probably get to covering those in a bit, but this is an official update and uses the cloud, so you can use it on any computer as long as you have a valid Creative Cloud subscription. In order to get the new update, you'll need to download the beta Photoshop client. You can head across to the Creative Cloud desktop app, then to the beta apps section here and simply locate and install Photoshop beta. When it's done installing, click open here and you'll see Photoshop start up as usual. But when it finishes, we'll see this, or at least you might see this. You can click try now and it'll take you across to an information page where you learn about all that you can do with this AI. You'll find this linked in the description down below. They go through generating objects by selecting an area, generating something, adding a prompt, variations, etc., generating backgrounds, extending images, removing objects, and of course, some benefits, tips and tricks, etc. Let's get to that now. So I'll close this and open up any image. All right, so let's go with this one, which I generated previously. Again, another pop up about it. And now we see this little bar at the bottom select subject, remove background, etc. But these are really powerful new generative AI functions. If you don't see the bar, you can simply head to window at the very top and make sure that the contextual taskbar is turned on. Now, when it is, all we need to do is select an area or select something. We can select a subject, for example, and that gives us what it thinks is the subject here. And as soon as anything is selected, you'll see it changes to generative fill at the very bottom. I'll just use Alt and Drag to get rid of this section down here. And we'll just zoom in and clean this up a bit more. There we go. That's good enough, really. Let's start with swapping out the background. In order to change the background, I'll hit Control Shift and I to invert my selection. So we have everything but the dog selected, generative fill, and it's telling us about user guidelines. I'll agree here. You'll also find this in the description down below. For example, we can't violate copyright, no commercial use currently while it's in beta. That's a little bit annoying, but for the most part, we're ready to mess around with it. So we can enter a prompt here, such as a park generate. Now we'll see what it spits out. After a few seconds, probably about 30, we should see a response and that's pretty good. If we have a look at our current layer, you'll see that there's a new layer here and that's the generative AI layer mask. If we click the layer, we'll get some options in the properties window, which you can open with window followed by properties. We have three variations generated for every selection that we generate. So for example, here's one, here's number two, here's number three. Obviously number three doesn't make much sense. Number one is probably the best. So I'll leave it here, for example. We can also click through them at the bottom here and give some responses such as good or bad. Great. Now you can of course change the prompt. If you simply change the prompt here, click generate and you'll get a few more variations listed right below. If we go ahead and select something else, for example, say these trees here, we can get rid of them. So generative fill and we'll call it maybe skyscrapers generate. And there we go. It tried its best to generate skyscrapers within the limitations I gave it, which is not very good ones and didn't work too well. So I'll delete the entire generative layer here and we'll try something else. Let's make a selection maybe next to the dog there and I'll say generative fill and we'll call it tennis ball generate. Now it should generate a tennis ball. But the amazing thing about this is that it should keep context about the rest of the image, copy styles, lighting, etc. For this, it seems to be violently moving for some reason, but maybe I'm just throwing a ball for the dog. That makes sense. This one seems the least blurry, so I'll leave it here. Great. Now we've generated an object and we've changed the background, but some of the other features they talk about is extending images, and that's really cool. So all we need to do is select the crop tool by hitting C, and now we can start dragging around the image to expand it. And of course, you can choose a ratio in the top left here if you'd like to lock it to a specific ratio. For example, I'll be cropping out maybe this section here, keeping the dog centered. Now we have two big bars on the side. What can we do about them? Well, first of all, we'll hit enter to lock in our changes as such. And now we will need to select the background. So I'll select the rectangular marquee tool and drag around the outside here. Then we'll hit generative fill and I'll leave it blank. 
That way, you should look at the rest of the image and copy some contextual clues about what it should be. Of course, you can push it in the right direction by typing in something there. Great, that did a really good job. Now we'll do the same on the other side. Generative fill and generate. That did okay. We'll try one of the other options here. Uh, this third one looks the best. It's not great. In some areas, it's getting a bit confused, but so am I. These aren't really leaves to begin with. Anyways, another useful feature of this is getting rid of objects. Let's say let's swap out the dog here, generative fill, and let's say a family running in the distance with dogs and generate. Now it should hopefully extend out the bark and put a family with dogs in the distance. And it tried. Let's see. No, for some reason it's making a very dark outline around the dog. I'd say maybe we should make a bigger selection instead of just close to the dog, something a bit bigger like that. Let's try once more. And once again, we have the weird outline, but you get the point. Something we can do to improve this, however, is select the mask here and actually add to it. So we'll add to mask, we'll make the cursor bigger without square brackets, and we'll draw around here. Oh, actually, we need to be subtracting. There we go. Oh, there's another child here. I'll add them to the picture. And there we go. It's definitely three people from a distance, but closer up, I don't think these are people. Anyways, you get the point. We've now made it look a bit better. Let's try a more generic picture. I just searched for photos. Here's a photo, for example. If we want to get rid of this person on the far right, we'll select them and simply generate a fill. I'll leave it blank, generate, and should try to get rid of whatever we have selected. Just like that, we've fixed the image. Perfect. So what are some of the limitations of this new generative AI in Photoshop? Well, of course, it's using Adobe Firefly to generate images, which is essentially just a stable diffusion competitor. It's trained in images and uses current day technology. So of course, some things will improve with time. Something else that you may have noticed when I zoomed in is that where we extended the pictures on the far sides, nope, oh, we scroll down quite a bit there, you'll notice that things are noticeably blurrier where we generated pixels. Maybe not in this image, but this one here, we should definitely see it. Zooming in, you can see it got rid of the film grain, for example, but zooming into the floor over here, you can see it got rid of quite a bit of quality. Why is that? Well, simply put, the image generation only works with images under 1024 pixels on the longest side. So if you like a higher quality generation, instead select bits of an image, especially when the image is very large, and use the generative fill to try and improve things. And of course, because this is generative AI in current day, the number one thing it'll struggle with is probably hands. There we go. You can see the image is noticeably sharper, but still not as sharp as the rest of the image. Anyway, you get the point. Now you can also use it to swap out elements of an image, for example. So I'll select the image layer and start selecting this man's t-shirt, for example, making sure that everything is selected plus minus. Let's go ahead and generate a fill and change it to a bright pink shirt generate. After a short while, we'll get our response. Now that's the pink shirt that we asked for. Obviously, if my selection was a bit cleaner, it may have done a better job, but you can see exactly just how powerful this thing is, especially when looking at it from a distance. It worked really well. So once again, if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, you'll be able to use this right now. It's open to everyone and released today, hence the double upload. Hopefully you found this guide interesting. Mine has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. Yeah.